Through the years, Bethesda has slowly added crafting and weapon systems into their games. From the simple weapon schematics of Fallout 3, to the blacksmithing and potion making simulator of Skyrim, to moving forward a few more years to the Fallout 4 weapon mod systems, and do I dare say it, Fallout 76. <coughs> anyway, but with Starfield entering the ring, I could not be more excited for the overhauls they've done with the weapon customizations and crafting systems. And with that being said, let's jump straight into it. Now to begin your crafting adventures, you're going be heading to your research laboratory. These can be found in a variety of spaces around the settled system, such as your ships and also your outposts. This is where you're going to be researching the different projects across these five trees. You have pharmacology which is going to be based around your chemical buffs and also your health packs. Food and drink which is going to be allowing you to get more recipes but also improve the effects that they bring. Outpost development which is all about unlocking new modules and also improving them. And if you're interested in a little bit more information about outposts, check the video link up above. And for the last ones we have equipment and weaponry. This is going to be diving into the different modifications that you can equip onto your armor and weapons. A little key thing to take away before we move on is the fact you're able to see the available projects underneath each tree, which is represented by this number here. Now as we dive deeper into the research lab, you're going to see a lot of information. On the left hand side we have the research projects. This is going to be showing us what is available for us to research. But also what you'll notice is that some are blocked. This is because you're going to need to complete the prerequisite before you're able to go to the next level, with the example here being Barrel Mods 1. Now for us to advance to Barrel Mods 2, all we're going to need to do is get a bunch of required materials, which we can see down the bottom here is 20 iron, 20 nickel and 10 sealant. Seems pretty simple right? Well here is the kicker. Up the top you're going to be noticing something called required skills. Yes, that is correct. A lot of these higher level projects are going to require you to have a certain level of a skill. For example, we have the gastronomy skill. At rank 1 it allows you to craft specialty food and drinks and also research additional recipes in the food and drink research lab tree. Now as you progress further into this tree you're going to need to have a higher level skill of gastronomy to unlock the better recipes. And this is going to carry through all 5 different trees that we're able to advance in. Now as we dip our toes into some weapon crafting you can see in front of us we have a list of mod slots that are currently available. And what I'm loving about this is the fact that each slot you go over it highlights on the gun itself. Look I get it, they did this in Fallout 4 but this just looks so much cleaner. The receiver mod slot allows you to change the type of firing for the gun, whether it's single shot, semi automatic or fully automatic, internal which is going to be changing the damage type your weapon is, from ballistic to energy to electromagnetic, optic which is going to be your iron sights and your scopes, magazine and battery which is going to be how many bullets you have in your gun and also the reloading speed, muzzles which is going to be the attachments at the end of your barrels such as silencers, and then stock which is your recall control. And what does it cost for all this amazing stuff you ask? Well a simple click on that subscribe button. But seriously most of these mods are going to be made up of two part metal one part component. And again with these lower ranked mods you're going to be finding that lead is a very common material. So just keep that in mind when you're resource hunting. Another little thing I'd like to point out is when we are going through the mods you're going to realize on the right hand side that some of them do tell you which research is required, which can all be accessed at your research laboratory. Now time for my favorite overhaul that they've done to this game, because resource gathering has never been this easy, and it all starts with opening up your planetary map on your ship. Now as we enter the planet overlay on the left side we're going to see a whole heap of information, from the gravity to the temperature to even the type of water that's available. But the things that we're most interested in for the crafting is the fauna, the flora and also the resources. And I hope you have a periodic table on hand because you may need it. Now the cool thing about this overlay is it's going to be showing us exactly what is going to be available on this planet. All thanks to being able to scan the planet before you land. So when we're looking at Parima we can see there's four different types of creatures, three different types of plants and there's also eight different resources that we're able to collect. Which is going to be extremely helpful when you're trying to find specific resources. Another little detail I like to brush over is the fact that it also shows the rarity of resources that are on the planet as well. With the single green star being uncommon, the double blue star being rare and the triple yellow star being legendary. 
Now, as you land your ship down on the new planet, you're gonna be surrounded by all sorts of new fauna and flora, which is where your environmental scanner comes into play so you can start researching. As we approach the Boreas route, you're gonna notice that we get 13% for a single scan. And as we go around the planet to find more of these individual plants, this is gonna increase more and more. This also goes for any creature that you may decide to scan. This is gonna unlock behavioral traits, what kind of resources come from this creature, and also what kind of biomes you're gonna be finding it in. So when we're looking at the moth when grazer we can see that the resource type is fiber what this points out is when this creature dies you have a chance of getting this resource from it which is the same for the hunting sail gator which has a chance to drop pigment and the swarming dragon that has the chance to drop sealant with these creatures resources being used to help you with your outpost building your weapon and armor modding and your crafting in general and just remember the swarming dragon drops that fine ass sealant now when completing certain plants and creatures surveys, it unlocks a mechanic called reproduction, which is going to allow you to reproduce them when you put them in your outpost, which is taking me back to the good old days of Farmville. <laughs> I know damn well a lot of you played this game. And once again, because I know how much you love me comparing this to Fallout 4, you can create trade routes between your outposts. Meaning, whatever ones you've connected, you're able to access their resources for crafting throughout the universe. So let me know in the comments below, are you going to be Starfield's next top farmer? <laughs> When we go about collecting mineral resources such as iron and other metals, you're going to notice one key difference when you pull up your environmental scanner. You are unable to scan and gain research points like you can with the flora and fauna and get new traits and understand the resource better, which essentially means you're going to have to planet hop to get to these resources. But lucky enough, this is when the whole planet scanning system comes back and gives you a great helping hand. So you're not flying around the solar system like the three blind mice just to try and find the resources you need. But a little cool thing that you're able to do with this type of resource is when you find deposits which you will on the planet, you're able to create some sort of production with your outpost that keeps on mining it. Which again comes back to the trading routes that you create. With enough of these automated production lines in place, you're going to be fine that you do not have to worry about resource gathering whatsoever. And all I can say to that is sign me up. So looking back over the years, I can safely say that Bethesda is slowly learning how to implement a good and safe crafting mechanic. Not to say that they have perfected it in any way, shape or form, but I do believe with Starfield, this is going to be their best system yet. With the different layers they've added into the crafting system, you know it's going to be a bit of a grind. But this may be a good grind to say the least. And the reason why I say this is because there are automated systems that you're able to put in place just to make that grind a little less. And on top of that, you obviously have your crew and companions to help make that matter even easier. I have no doubt in mind that when Starfield comes out, it's going to be as good as it seems. And for all those people that are constantly throwing negativity at this game, you need to get over yourself. Bring back the days where success was celebrated by all. And on that note, I just want to thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe because there's plenty of more Starfield in the tank. Let me know your thoughts in the comments because I'm always eager to see what you think. And until then, I hope you have a fantastic day and buckle in boys because we're going to space.